In this video, we're going to look at some solving basics for trig equations. And we'll do that looking at this equation, sine theta equals the square root of 3 over 2. Now you're probably familiar with finding exact values for trig functions, and you'll see that solving, especially basic trig equations, will feel a, a lot like that. It's very similar. You're just working in the opposite direction. So when I'm solving a trig equation in this format, I like to think, which angles have a sine of positive square root of 3 over 2. So that's the basis for the whole process that we'll look into next. Okay, so here's our outline. We start first by analyzing our equation. So we'll want to find which quadrants we're working in, and we'll do that using the acronym ASTC, more on that later. And we'll also, once we have the quadrants we should be working in, we'll find the reference angle, which will then in step two, help us determine our angle answers. So basically we'll look at our analysis and we'll synthesize our solutions for the equation. And here's that equation again, sine theta equals positive root three over two. And again, our overall thought needs to be for which angles is the sine equal to the ratio positive root three over two. So let's start by looking at the quadrants. This is our first bit of analysis. The acronym ASTC, think all students take classes, tells us which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. So label your quadrants like this, starting in quadrant one, A, S, T, C. And that will help you remember which trig functions are positive in each of the quadrants. So the A, they're all positive in quadrant one, in quadrant two, the S tells us that sine and its reciprocal cosecant are the only trig functions positive in the second quadrant. In the third, it's tangent and cotangent that are positive. And in the fourth, it's cosine and secant that are positive. So now look back to the equation. We see that our ratio that sine theta is equal to is positive. So we want the quadrants where sine is positive, And that is going to be in the first and the second. So let's go ahead and sketch our angles in here. We know we'll have an angle in quadrant one and another in quadrant two. So now that we've determined our quadrants, let's find our reference triangle. That'll help us get our reference angle, um, which we'll use in step two. So when solving, you definitely want to be familiar with your special right triangles and their properties and how they work on the unit circle. Um, if you're not, I'll post a help link in the video description for some unit circle basics, and you'll find videos there that go into detail on each of the special right triangles. Um, but here, let's assume we know that, and we can see that our ratio, the root three over two, remember that the sine is the y coordinate on the unit circle. So that means our vertical leg should be that length square root three over two. That's the longest leg. So we're going to be working with this special right triangle which is the one that has the 60 degree angle as the central angle. So I call it the 60, 30, 90 special right triangle. And again, it has that longer vertical leg and then the shorter leg would be one half. So that reference angle is really what we want. We know it's 60 degrees. And if you are working in degrees, that's great. Um, you can do everything how we do it in the next couple of steps um, and just make sure you're in terms of degrees, but most of the time when you're solving trig equations, you want to be in radians. So let's go ahead and adjust this. 60 degrees is pi over three radians, and that's going to be our reference triangle, so, or our reference angle, and that's the distance from the angle's terminal side and the x-axis. So these two angles here our reference angles. And now we're ready for step two. We'll actually find the angle answers here. So the angle in quadrant one is relatively easy. We know that that reference angle is pi over three. Well, an angle in the first quadrant is actually its own reference angle. We just rotate in that counterclockwise direction, pi over three radians. So one of our answers is going to be pi over three. That comes from our first quadrant angle. Now our second quadrant angle, we have to do a little bit of manipulation here. We know that if we rotated halfway all the way to pi, um, or it is pi, a halfway rotation, um, but we're rotating just a little bit less than that. We're rotating like this for this angle. So basically we need to subtract our reference angle from pi. 
And I think it might re help to rewrite pi as 3 pi over 3, and then just take away 1 pi over 3. So our quadrant 2 angle then must be 2 pi over 3. And now if you're familiar with your unit circle, it's very likely that you just know that the angles that have a pi over 3 reference angle in quadrants 1 and 2 are these, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 respectively. And as you practice more and more and solve more equations, you'll get to the point where you will just know that and you won't actually have to do all of the um, detailed work to name each angle. All right, so these are the two angles. You can sub them back in um, to the equation and you'll find if you find the exact value sine of pi over 3 or sine of 2 pi over 3, that ratio or that exact value solution is positive root 3 over 2. So we call these our solutions over the interval from 0 to 2 pi, or I like to say the solutions on the unit circle or one rotation around the unit circle. Now if you're asked to find all solutions, you just have to do a little bit of adjusting here. So we want to say that we'll take pi over 3 first. We want to say that pi over 3 and then all of its coterminal angles, so they share the same terminal side, you just rotate differently to get there, those would also be solutions to this equation. And so we can write a really neat equation to capture all of those solutions, and we just have to do it for each angle that we found above. So one equation will be that theta is going to be pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And that's where k is an integer. And we do 2 pi because 2 pi is a full rotation around from our starting point. And so the k, just substitute in different integers, and you'll get different coterminal angles with pi over 3. Um, a quick note, sometimes you use n or a different variable, um, but it works the exact same way. Okay, then let's write our second solution equation for all solutions. So we'd say theta also can be 2 pi over 3 plus all its coterminal angles, so plus 2 pi k. So these two equations represent all solutions to the above equation. All right, and that's all there is to it. Hopefully this helps you feel confident with your solving basics. And as you can solve more and more of these, I'll post more examples. Um, so check those links below in the video description. Um, but as you get better and better at solving the basics, you'll be ready to move on to the more complex equations. Thanks so much for watching.